Hey guys, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. I'm glad you're here. It's another great day to serve the Lord as we await the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Looks like Israel is talking about going after Iran. Iran is talking about retaliation for that consulate attack that happened last week. And we'll get to that heavy stuff. But before we do, I want to do communion if anyone wants to join me. Okay. Uh, if you do want to join me, pause the video and get your elements. All you need is, you know, half a cracker, a scrap of bread, a sip of water, a sip of grape juice. Doesn't matter. It's symbolism. It's symbolism. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And when I take, I'm going to kind of take communion like I do when I do it on my own. And I do it daily. Um, and I'm going to just talk out loud and tell you the things that I think about and talk about when I take communion, okay? Um, there's two elements. There's the bread and there's the cup. And it represents the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And we have a perfect picture of what's going on when you look at the Passover. It's a perfect picture. The Passover happens. What happens is the night before they're going to be led out of Egypt. Moses is leading the Israelites who have been slaves for 400 years in Egypt. And the night before, Moses gives them instruction. And because what's going to happen is there's going to be, you know, the Lord gave Moses this instruction. And if they don't paint the door frame with blood in the doorpost, and if they don't eat the roasted lamb, like the firstborn of every household is going to die. It's part of God's judgment on Egypt. So in faith, they all take a lamb. Each dwelling takes a perfect lamb. And they slaughter it. And they paint the doorpost and the door frame with the blood. And then they take the meat inside and they roast it over fire. They couldn't boil it. They had to roast it over fire and eat it quickly. They had a huge journey the next day. And whatever they didn't use with the meat, they burned it in the morning. Right before their journey. And the amazing thing is that two and a quarter million or so people left with Moses. And there wasn't one sick one, not one crippled one. It said there wasn't one feeble one among them. You know why? Because that roasted lamb healed them. That's why I think there's two elements in the communion. I think the bread is for our healing and I think the blood is for sin, a representative of sin. And that's why it's so amazing that the Jews had the faith in the blood and they painted the doorpost and the door frame. And when God passed over, they were saved. Their firstborn didn't die because God saw the blood and he passed over. That's a perfect picture of Jesus. It's a perfect picture picture of the father today notice when God passed over he didn't look in the houses and inspect their behavior he didn't say oh well let me see all right that one wasn't baptized that one doesn't believe in a flat earth oh that one's King James version oh no 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 God saw the blood and he passed over and he spared the people in those dwelling places because he saw the blood when God looks at you and he sees Jesus' blood because you have faith in that blood that it'll wash you white as snow. You're saved. You're saved. And this communion is a perfect picture. I believe the bread is for healing because when they ate that roasted lamb quickly, like I said, two and a quarter million people left. Nobody was sick. Everyone was healed. So when I take the bread, I always say, by your stripes, or your wounds, Lord, I was healed by your stripes. I was healed, and I take this in Jesus' name. Then we take the cup, and we know that we are made worthy only by the blood of the Lamb. 
And that's what I say to Jesus every time I take this. I am made worthy only by the blood of the Lamb in your precious name, Jesus. And there you go. There you go. I'm going to go over a few scriptures. I'm just trying to get you guys to understand. You know, at the Last Supper, it was the last meal Jesus had with his disciples. He had it in the upper room. It was a room of somebody's house. It wasn't in a temple. Matthew 26, verses 26 through 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus talking about that precious blood he was about to shed to pay for our sins. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 8 is where it talks about, Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire. In Psalm, I'm just backing up with scripture, what I had talked about earlier. In Psalm 105, verse 37, and there was none feeble among them. When they left for that journey, two and a quarter million, not a weak one among them, they got healing from eating that roasted lamb. Every sickness and every sin was laid upon Jesus. Always remember that. Always remember that. Doesn't mean we all get our healing. But we should all be hoping and trusting, I'm going to get my healing. And you know what? I do that with my Lyme disease. But if he chooses not to heal me, he'll heal me on the other side. But that's what I. That's why I believe there are two elements. Physical healing and spiritual restoration. Let's go to Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24, he puts a past tense. With his stripes, you were healed. It's beautiful. The table of the Lord, guys, is a table of grace. I'm hoping I'm inspiring some of you to take communion every day. Now, a lot of people, I, I, I got to cover this because a lot of pastors will say before they pass out the communion, examine yourself to see if you're worthy. When are you going to be worthy? <laughs> Do you know how many people that keeps away from doing communion? Oh, wait a minute. I lied this week. And yeah, you know, wait a minute. I got, you know, the worthiness Paul was talking about, because that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through 29. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Very serious what he's saying here, but people have it messed up. They have it backwards. They all of a sudden, we take our attention off the one who paid for our sins with his blood. And we're looking inward now. Oh, wait a minute. Am I worthy to take this? I'm never worthy to take the communion. He is worthy. That's a bad translation. It should have said unworthily. Don't take the bread or the cup without your eyes on the worthiness of what Jesus did for us. It's not about us. We're never going to be worthy. Some of you maybe think you are, but no, we're never going to be worthy. Jesus is our worthiness. So we don't take the cup and the bread thinking, you know, you're you're taking the bread and cup and you're like, yeah, I'm going to have lunch soon and then I'm going to go to the ball game. And, you know, and you're not even thinking about that's taking it unworthily without seeing the worth of what Jesus did when he paid for our sins with his blood. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But let's go to what's going on in the world. Okay. This is from the sun, the U.S. sun. In the crosshairs, Israel preparing to strike Iranian nuclear facilities amid tense wait for revenge attack and soaring World War III fears. Israel is preparing to strike Iranian nuclear plants if faced with a revenge attack for the death of a top Tehran commander last week. 
Netanyahu's war cabinet has been locked in crunch meetings over fears that Iran will launch an assault as the Middle East tensions threaten to boil over into all-out war. Now a Western security official has revealed that Israel will respond to any attacks by striking Iran's nuclear targets directly. Israeli forces have been conducting secret Air Force drills in preparation for the dangerous escalation, according to Elof News. So this is uh, one source. I've only found a few sources that are saying that they're saying in these cabinet meetings, look, we're going to strike Iran, even if the proxies strike us. Because in other places, and I'll get to those, they're saying they'll only strike Iran if Iran directly strikes Israel from their land. So this is just something to keep our eye on. I can't really get a bottom line to it, but there are multiple sources saying each thing. This is from Israel Radar. Israel tells the U.S. direct attack by Iran will trigger Israeli strike in Iranian territory. Now, they estimate the IDF will ultimately bomb Iran even in response to proxy attacks as Israel's war doctrine has to change. Tehran can no longer get immunity over proxy actions. Serious stuff. Serious stuff in these last days. They keep saying, like, we don't know how long. Iran's got to respond, either from their land or through their proxies. That's just, they're going to look so weak. The whole Arab world already is, like, upset. They're like, come on, what are you waiting for? They said they would do it by the end of Ramadan. Now Ramadan is done. Interesting. Israel, this is from the Times of Israel. Israel threatens a powerful response in Iran's territory if it attacks from its own soil. The warnings came after Iran's supreme leader, Khomeini, said Israel must be punished, and it shall be, for allegedly attacking an Iranian consular building in Syria's Damascus, killing two generals among several Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps officers. Khomeini said that in bombing an embassy site, Israel attacked our territory. In this war, we are being attacked from more than one front, from different directions. Any enemy that tries to attack us will, first of all, be met with a strong defense. That's what Yoav Gallant said. It's just very, very interesting. Eyes on Jesus, right? Eyes on Jesus. We don't have to worry. You belong to Jesus. We don't have to worry. It's like having the strongest dad in the neighborhood, and there's trouble in the neighborhood, and you're a little kid, you're going to run to dad, right? You know dad ain't going to let anyone hurt you. That's the that's the situation we're in in these very last days. Well, what are you going to run to? Your, your investment portfolio? <laughs> what are you going to run to? Politicians? You see this mess in the world? You're going to run to politicians? You think any leader's going to fix this? Naive at best. Jesus is the only thing to cling to in these days. This is from Israel Radar. The IDF advances prep for intensified fighting versus Hezbollah. Ground invasion of Lebanon. Potential war on multiple fronts in case of an Iranian revenge attack. Israel's preparing for a lot of war. And I'm waiting to see at what point God steps in. Because I think he does step into this war at some point. I've told you since October 7th. This is the war. The war that started really October 8th. Uh, October 7th, Israel got attacked. October 8th, they started, uh, uh, you know, attacking. Um, but I've said ever since that day, this is the war that leads to the rapture. I still believe it wholeheartedly, meaning there may be a ceasefire for a little while. There may be a few months, but this war is the war I believe that leads to the rapture. And, and I don't say it just because of this isolated war. I say it because all the signs have converged. Everything we're told to look for is in play. The whole world is ready for the seven-year tribulation. This war starts, I'm like, yep, this leads to the rapture. And I still believe it completely, 100%. I won't tell you the day. I don't know the day or the hour of the rapture. I don't know the month. But this leads to it. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Iran's naval commander threatens Israel, talks up regional war. So you're seeing it's in all these sources. There, One of Iran's top naval commanders spoke with the pro-Iranian al Mayadeen in a wide-ranging interview where he stretched, he sketched out how Iran wants to become a naval and regional military power and how it plans to confront Israel on various fronts. 
Iran's pro-government Fars News characterized the new policy as calling for a coalition of Muslim armies against the Zionist regime. His main message is that Iran will not remain quiet after an airstrike in Damascus killed a top IRGC commander last week. It will respond. Iran has been saying this for a week now. He added that Iran became an exporter of weapons, including missiles, boats, radar, and that the U.S. embargo on Iran has not succeeded. No, especially when you're giving them piles of money. <laughs> Iran is growing more powerful in its manufacturing power. He further noted that Israel has not achieved its goals in Gaza after six months of war. This is a key point for Iran, which has watched this war carefully, particularly Israel's messaging on its own goals. Another one, this is from Iran International. Israel prepares for potential strike on Iranian nuclear sites. In the wake of last week's airstrikes in the consulate in Damascus, Israel has reportedly indicated its readiness to target Iranian assets should Iran launch a direct retaliatory attack. Israel has been conducting air force drills. We said that earlier, specifically preparing to target Iranian nuclear facilities and other critical infrastructure. I don't really see Israel attacking Iran directly. I don't really see it. Iran's got to be strong because the Ezekiel 38 is coming and Iran is a major player in that. I think that's after the rapture. So I don't really see that. This is from the Times of Israel. Hamas rejects the United States proposal for a Gaza truce and they will suggest their own plan instead. Because after all, they have all the power. They got the whole media for them. They got the whole world chanting on their side. Hamas has rejected a U.S. proposal for a Gaza truce at hostage release and will instead put out its own roadmap for ending the war in Gaza, the Wall Street Journal reports. The paper reports that Hamas' main issue is that it does not include a reference to ending the war. The group will put its own proposal instead later this week based on an earlier proffer, said the paper reports. Um, the earlier offer was for a staged deal in which Israel would release prisoners for some hostages, along with a partial troop withdrawal and unfettered access to northern Gaza for display, displaced Palestinians with more hostages to be released later once all troops withdraw. So they want to do it on their terms. You know, they're losing the war big time, but they're winning the PR war big time for now. They are. The whole world is for them. Listen to this. This is Amir Safadi. This is a good one. He said, we live in the days of strong delusions and great deception. This is what a good friend from Lebanon wrote me this morning. Never have I ever thought that the Palestinians would be one day able to outsmart the world and trick it to believe their lies. The whole world. Israel's become a cup of trembling to the whole world. And the whole world is against it. And it doesn't matter you know, that all you have to say is Israel's committing genocide. There's no evidence of it. There's no evidence of it, but everyone runs with it. You can go to a grocery store and say to somebody, how's Israel? Oh, they're committing genocide. Okay. This is from Israel Today. And I saw this clip. It was somewhere on Telegram. It was like a three or four minute clip. Biden administration confirms there's no genocide in Gaza. At a U.S. congressional hearing yesterday, the following exchange took place. Senator Tom Cotton I want to address what the protesters raised earlier. Is Israel committing genocide in Gaza? Secretary of, Lloyd, uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said, we don't have any evidence of genocide. We don't have any evidence of that to my knowledge. It was an, it's an interesting clip if you can find it. I'll try to remember to find a link for it, but um, worth watching because look, when you're committing genocide, you don't drop pamphlets in every area you're about to go into saying to the civilians, get out of here because we're about to come in here. And this is the route you take to get out of here. You don't do that. That's not what genocide is. But people are very, very, very gullible. And that truck is very, very loud. It's the water wagon. Huh. All right. What's next? Blinken, this is from Insider Paper. Blinken says Israel has not shared a date for the Rafah operation. Would you share it with the United States? I wouldn't at this point. Mm -mm. Israel has not shared a date for an assault on Gaza's Rafah with the United States. 
which will keep raising concerns, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said Tuesday after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the time was set. So Netanyahu has a date. He won't share it with the United States. I wonder why. Read between the lines there. <laughs> Do you remember the way we exited Afghanistan? There's not much trust for us anymore, honestly. And this is not, <laughs> this is not a partisan issue. I'm not fond of either side, just so you know. I always have to clarify that. No, we do not have any date for an operation, at least one that's been communicated to us by the Israelis, Blinken told reporters. And I wonder why. You know, and we're their supposed greatest ally. You know, the whole world has turned their back on Israel. The whole world. All right, earthquakes. 44 over 4.0. In the last 24 hours, five over 5.0. Oh, where's my clown sound effect? <laughs> Get ready for this. We're going to clown world. Get your nose ready. Get your curly hair, your big shoes. <laughs> We're going to take a stroll in clown world. Cultured meat is getting awfully specific. <sighs> The race to bring lab-grown meat to the market is heating up as companies like Upside and Good Meat have already been cleared to sell their lab-cultivated animal-free meat in the country of Singapore. Enter a third company, an Australian startup called Vow, V-O-W, Vow, with a new product that is recently approved for sale in Singapore last month. But unlike Upside and Good Meat, which both produce lab-grown chicken, Vow has gone in a decidedly more wild direction and has unveiled something even more specific to the fake meat world, artificial Japanese quail. The new lab-grown meat is called quailia. <laughs> I'll just have water ya. <laughs> just give me a nice cold glass of water, okay? I'll pass on the uh, fake Japanese quail. <laughs> That's, where is it? That's clown world. All right, Business Insider. OpenAI and Meta are on the verge of releasing artificial intelligent models capable of reasoning like humans, says a report. OpenAI and Meta are reportedly preparing to release more advanced AI models that would be able to help problem solve and take on more complex tasks. OpenAI's chief operating officer, Brad Lightcap, told the Financial Times that the company's next version of GPT would show progress on solving hard problems, such as reasoning. You know what? The Lord gave us the ability to reason, and he gave us a sound mind. We don't need an artificial mind to tell us how to reason. Anyway, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface on the ability that these models have to reason, he told the outlet. Some experts, though, warn that developing such technology could put humans at risk of extinction. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's a oh wait, there's a slight chance of extinction. <gasps> Why? Where do I sign up? <laughs> Form a line. Clowns in the back. No, actually, clowns are in the front in this world. All I, I look at this stuff, and I just it just makes me just go, Jesus, I, I'm ready. Uh, are you guys ready? I think we're ready, Lord. I think we've seen enough. You can come get us now. <laughs> but you know what? His timing's perfect. Ours isn't. No matter what anyone tries to tell you. Now, our timing's not perfect. Jesus' timing is perfect. So I'm going to trust in him and just maneuver through clown world and share the gospel until the day he takes us home. Let's go to a couple um, testimonies. This is Venetia. I went to church to please my grandmother. I prayed during prayer time that I don't know how to pray. The singer came out and began to sing a song. You don't have to know how to pray. All you have to know is to say, Jesus. I got saved that night. It's beautiful. Thank you, Venetia. I love it. Clyde. I asked the Lord to show me how he sees me. I just knew I was saved, and he did. He showed me I was lost and worthless and headed to hell. He showed me he would have said, depart from me. I never knew you. And through that experience, he led me to salvation through Jesus Christ. My hope and my salvation is in Christ alone. Amen, Clyde. Thank you. Woo! That one gave me goosebumps. Good. Let's do a few comments of the day. Kimberly. 
I truly believe sudden destruction, rapture, chaos, war, tribulation will begin. I think we're so close. I agree, Kimberly. I agree. Very, very close. Susan, I was awestruck by the eclipse. Amazing. The heavens do proclaim the glory of God. Amen, they do. Amen. Some people said, oh, you were worshiping the sun and the moon by looking up at it. It's like, so now we're not even supposed to look at God's creation and give him the glory. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. If you're looking at the beauty of what God created and you're like, Lord, you're magnificent. You're not saying sun and moon, you're magnificent, you know. But, you know, people will be people. They really will. <laughs> All right, Teresa. Oh, Tom, it was a sight I'd never experienced. She's talked about the eclipse. I'm 63 years old and I felt so blessed. In Northeast Ohio, we had full totality. But you know what? It is nothing like what we'll see and experience once we are rescued to him. Keep looking up, my friend. Amen, Teresa. Yeah, as cool as that eclipse was. Yeah, no. Being face to face with Jesus. Oh, man. Now you're talking. <laughs> Robin. If you're going through trials, pain, sadness, loneliness, missing family, uncertainties, worry, anger, frustration, if you're in bondage or war, hang on to the Lord our God, because this too shall pass. Same as the moon past the sun, soon it will all be behind us. Prayers and blessings. That's beautiful, Robin. Man, that's almost like a poem. I love it. Thank you. Let's do one more. Connie. I feel so bad that this country is so blessed and many never give it a thought to where these blessings come from. You go to a sporting event and people are gathered in droves and when they cheer and they hoot and they howl over the game, they meet in droves and cheer at the eclipse. They go to a concert and they go nuts over the band. Then I have gone to churches and the singing would begin and everyone has no interest no raising of hands in honor of God. That is the saddest thing I know of. Pray that our country knows who is the blessed, who is the blesser of her. Let the eyes of the blind be open, Lord. You know what, Connie, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I've been to concerts where people are shaking and hands, you know, up in the air and crying, watching their favorite singer sing a song. You go to sporting events. Oh, my goodness. Some people are worshiping the athletes. You go to church. It's like, yeah, what time do we get out of here? Sad. That's sad, isn't it? Especially when you realize. When you start to realize what happened 2,000 years ago. Jesus walked the earth. He came here from heaven. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. No one gets to the Father or goes to heaven but by me. Jesus came here to rescue rebellious people. Jesus came here and he laid his life down. He shed blood to pay for our sins while we were rebels, while we were still sinners. He didn't wait for us to clean up your act. Look, if you guys all clean up your act, then I'll go to the cross and I'll pay for your sins. He didn't say that because he knew we can't. We're powerless. We can't be good enough to earn any bit of our salvation. Jesus paid it all. He paid for it with his blood. He came here knowing he was going to shed blood because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He came here knowing the lamb of God came here knowing that he was going to be brutalized and nailed to a cross and shed blood, that precious, beautiful blood that will take every sin you've ever done or will ever do. And it'll wash it away completely. It'll wash you white as snow you will be a clean slate because of what Jesus did. 
And you know what? This upsets some people. You can't do one thing to contribute to that, to your salvation, except believe. People like to feel like they're contributing something because then they can get a little proud about it and start telling others, oh, well, you have to do this, this, and this, and this, or you're not really saved. You're not holy enough. You're not worthy enough. You're never going to be worthy enough. You're never going to be holy enough. He is our holiness. He is our worthiness. He is our all in all. He is the one-time payment for sins, that blood. Jesus, we can't earn it. And if you think you're earning part of it, man, I wouldn't want to stand in your shoes, honestly. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And grace is an unearned gift from God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace, an unearned gift, you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast or lest any man should boast. Because if, if the Lord allowed us to earn the slightest bit of our salvation, then somebody would do it better than somebody else. And pride would set in. And I see it. I see it today. You know, some people think, well, oh, man, you have to get water baptized or you're not going to heaven. Okay, so you've just thrown away every deathbed conversion that's ever happened. So some officer who's, who goes to a tragic accident in a desert and he's a believer and he says to the man, you've got to to realize Jesus paid for your sins with his blood and the man starts crying, thank you, Jesus. No, he's not going to heaven. He didn't have time to get dunked. It's not part of salvation. I always recommend, I get emails all the time. Tom, do you think I should be baptized? I have an opportunity to do that. And I'm like, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you make a public proclamation. You know what, guys? I'm following Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Absolutely, I recommend it. But I always tell them, look, it's not part of salvation. Galatians 5, verse 4, said, You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. Scary words. Once you think your doing is better than his done, you're in for it. Regarding works in John chapter 6, verses 28 and 29. Then they said to Jesus, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? What are the works, Jesus? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. There it is. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. All you do, you guys, who are, if any of this is ringing true, all you do, you just say to Jesus, Jesus, I believe in the power of your blood. I have faith in the blood you shed that it will wash me white as snow. And I believe you went to the cross and you died and you were placed in a tomb and you rose again the third day. You were alive again. I know my sins are washed white as snow because of your blood. I believe in your finished work on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. At that moment, you're saved. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old man will die and you will be new. And Jesus said, behold, I make all things new. All things new. And I always
always have to tell you the flip side. If you hear all this and you're like, this just isn't for me. I'm just going to live my life. I'm doing fine without Jesus. You're going to, if you do that until your last breath on earth, you're going to face Jesus on judgment day. And I just, I have to tell you, because then you'll know. <laughs> then you can never say, I didn't know. It'll be most, the most terrifying moment of your existence. Kneeling before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Kneeling before the one who you'll probably see the scars or wounds in his hands. And he's going to say, your sins are still going to be with you because you rejected the payment. So you're not being sent to hell by God. I don't want to believe in a God who would send me to hell. No, it's your rejection of the free gift he's giving you. You want this free gift? No. Okay. For sin comes death. And I'm offering the payment for sin. But if you say, no, I don't need this. I, I'm okay. I'm more good than bad. You're going to end up before him and he's going to say, away from me. I never knew you. The scariest words you could ever hear from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, away from me. I never knew you. Eternal separation from God. You're led off to hell. Like I said, you won't say, God, you're unfair. You're unjust. You'll say, I didn't believe in the payment for my sins. I deserve what I'm getting. Hard words to hear, I know. Hard words to hear. But you know what? Truth is rare in this world. And truth is hard to hear. You know, we built a whole society on not, don't tell me the truth. Tell me what I want to hear. <laughs> right? Tell me lies. I, I can digest the lies better. Don't tell me truth. That hurts. <laughs> but look, Jesus has got a future that's so amazing for you. If you'll take him up on it. Believe in his blood and believe in his finished work and be saved and do it today. Because today is the day of salvation. All right. Sorry to be so long-winded today. But that. These things were put on my heart. Sharing communion was put on my heart. So I did it. All right. I love you guys. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video, every single one. And if we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.